and welcome to Rise Up, where we learn about different fields through experts in those fields and for teens to have a better understanding of basically the work or environment around them. Today, we have a very highly esteemed guest, Mr. S. K. Tripathi. Welcome, Mr. Tripathi. Uh, Mr. Tripathi works in the construction field. He is the CEO of GAMC Products, which conducts business in two continents and with a revenue of less than 1 billion US dollars and according to um, Mr. Tripathi himself and has 7,000 employees. He has an order backlog of $1.5 billion. Honestly, that's amazing. So I would like to start from the very beginning. What drew you into this industry? And the reason I ask this is for those people that have the same likings as you so that they can also find that, hey, you know what, the construction field might be good for me. Good, thank you. So uh, what drew me to this industry? Yes. My passion, right. So when I was in, uh, uh, so just to let you know, when I was in class eight, I went to biology class for a few days, uh, mm -hmm. 15 days. And then I realized, you know, the biology is, or becoming doctor is not a, my cup of tea. And then I moved to the maths history. Uh, so that time you were not uh, so aware that which stream and when you have to choose, right? So right at eight class after this uh, bifurcation to the mass, when we reached to the college, I realized that I will be more happy building something, right? Some sense we got, but more than that, we, I developed a sense that I should be a very busy person when I grow as a professional, irrespective mm -hmm. of which field it is. And my real dream was that if I do my morning meeting in one city, then evening meeting should be there in some other city. Wow. This was my dream when I was in the second year. So I was not aspiring the, for any government job or anything. And that was my uh, dream. And uh, uh, after the graduation, I started uh, from the very basics. I started with a, uh, with a construction company and then grew up. To answer your question, what uh, drew me to this industry? This uh, biz uh, passion for business drew me to this industry, right? And uh, uh, what made me succeed here is again, I will say that my passion to do best what I have in the hand. Right, that's awesome, that's awesome. Um, but let's say someone doesn't have as much of a passion as you, right? Because people may have several different interests. So how might um, some other students know whether they are a good fit for the construction industry? What kind of traits do you see uh, that are common throughout the construction industry? So uh, let me tell you one thing fundamentally. For anyone to succeed in any field, whether it mm -hmm. is a construction or IT, or it is a, uh, you want to become a good player, you want to become a, a, a very good uh, orator, I think the first and foremost thing required is the passion. Mm -hmm. No substitute to that. That passion energy, once translated into the action, will give you the result. I see. So, uh, yes, now coming to that, so when you say the passion, passion is nothing according to me, is but a innate energy within you, which if channelized properly can get you the results. Wow. Now, how do you know that whether you are fit for this? I think, uh, uh, the very basic thing is that you must love what you are doing. Mm -hmm. if, you are, mm -hmm. if you are not fitting, if you are finding that you are out of place or you are not liking what you are doing, then that is not is good for you. Right. So sooner we discover, better it is that whether I like this job or not. So let me tell you, uh, for coming into the construction, one thing is, so it is a tough industry, right? Mm -hmm. One must be prepared to work long hours, slog, and this is how this industry is. 
secondly the second important passion that you should have the flavor for numbers mm -hmm. that any business requires um, the flavor for numbers but if you want to rise up to the top and uh, want to grow yourself in this industry or any industry your analytical skills and your love for the numbers must be very very high because that is what ultimately puts you into the into the driver seat if you have a sense of numbers if you understand that whatsoever the uh, works you are going to do or whatsoever the projects you are doing how you are converting those into the numbers and those numbers are tangible to you and the company i see i see so yes, if you ask me, if you ask me the most important thing you one must have the good analytical skills also mm -hmm. the third very important thing to succeed is that one must have the ability to get into the details right your decision making ability should be quick um, mm -hmm. um and uh, uh, you you may use the intuition right as you grow up you make a intuitive decisions but those foundation of those intuitive decisions are basically on the uh, analytical abilities mm -hmm. so basically not only are you looking for people who like to build and have passion you're also looking for people who are quick, quick to think and quick on their feet in that sense that's right that's right i see i see so in an ideal situation where you have where you have access to all kinds of people um how would you um choose who gets to work for your company what kind of people do you or would you look for when hiring and the reason i ask this is that for students to start building their profile in such a way that uh, they don't have to focus on unnecessary things so as i said today also when i we recruit uh, uh soon the senior level or junior level people we have a uh, uh, very sound process and the people have to go particularly for the senior level i am not talking of the junior level mid level to senior level people have to go through the number of psychometric tests we look at the psycho makeup of the guy or the person and what we really look for first there so when you do a psychometric test of the people right from their energy level to their introvert extrovert or what kind of profiles they have the first thing we look in our industry is that to succeed in this industry one must be extrovert i see the second is high energy level and the third is decision making we definitely look at and the analytical skill so if you ask me if i have to take a person i will look for these four attributes decision making ability analytical skills the energy level mm -hmm. and uh, what is the fourth one i said one more attribute so these are the four skill set if he has got then he is fit for or this is what is fit for us wow okay okay yeah. and um going back a little reflecting on the past um what would be one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self right because um the reason i ask this is that teens may make the same mistake as you as they grow up as well so this would serve i believe as a word of caution as a word of advice so um what might you suggest to them or yourself as well my my suggestion is that discover your passion mm -hmm. right and the second is give 100% to what you are doing not 99.9 i see whatsoever you are doing right so uh, it let it be uh, uh, so let it be a construction any field right Uh, one must be prepared to give his hundred percent to whatsoever he is doing at that moment of time. So, if you are attempting something, something with the half-hearted or ninety percent effort, you are not going to get the result. 
any excellence any excellence in any field will demand 200% not even 100% so my piece of advice even if you are studying in studying give study 100% when you are studying if you are playing give 100% to the game right so you can't be so you can't be thinking of the game when you are studying and you can't be thinking of the study when you are playing so sorry about that and this is the normal mistake we do right and in in a shorter way you can summarize this is the focus so one must be very very focused definitely definitely so um now a little more shifting to instead of you um i want to look at the industry as a whole since you've been in the industry for um three decades right or over three decades um you you've seen the industry change and grow so how has the industry changed since then and how do you believe the industry is going to change now and uh, the reason i ask this is because um, you know as you see the industry grow and change it also develops in different ways in different fields a little better right so this would affect not only um, you know future employees but also may affect current employees so just to give you the flavor uh, this is the oldest profession mankind has discovered okay. so when the man started thinking that how does he hide from the rain and water rain and the sun this is the first time he started thinking of building something okay. so our th this industry is as old as the human kind himself okay as far as the evolution of the industry is concerned uh, it has evolved a lot i mean i mean today uh, the way we see it uh, initially if you look at any industry has taken lot of time to progress but in last say 50 years this industry has tra transformed a lot mm. right um, rather 100 years i will say right before the first uh, uh, world war right there has been huge infrastructure building across europe and that was one of the foundations of Uh, the modern construction industry which grew up from there mm -hmm. um, uh, let it be the uh, the infrastructure let it be even the equipments most of the equipments which are adapted in the construction they basically could come from the defense industry they were modified later on from a war machine to a construction machine i see right and uh, Uh, today globally in every part of the segment construction industry is in a different stage of evolution mm -hmm. yes. but if you ask me globally if you rate it at say number 1 most evolved uh, 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 industry maybe construction will come at 20th number or 21st number right because the construction could not be automated as manufacturing construction okay. could not be automated like your uh, it industry mm -hmm. and this has been more people driven but mm -hmm. last uh, the last 10 to 15 years lot of changes are happening on the mechanization of the construction so yeah. to give you idea earlier if you are constructing a 50 story building you were thinking a time span of 3 years today or so maybe 50 years back they were doing it in a, in a four years time now they do it in one and a half year time <laughs> the uh, the complexity of the construction have changed uh, right today when you want to you construct a building you want the best facade uh, right glass facade you want your buildings to be tall right you want them uh, with the fully air conditioned building fully automated whole intelligent system right now this kind of construction has evolved in last 50 to 60 years a lot, a lot. okay mm -hmm. and this is going to evolve further so i think the mechanization of the construction as well as bringing more new products which will facilitate the construction to become very fast 
that is going to be the future of this industry also uh, the there are evolutions are happening where the houses will be constructed with the 3d printing so there no yeah. need yeah there is no need of the people coming and doing the house for you right uh, the the experiments are already happening that uh, the, the modular houses okay not uh, the every house but the modular houses construction can be automated and they can be done through the 3d printing wow right so according to me the, uh, this as long as the human kind is there on the earth this industry has a future without this you can't survive and the as the other industries are evolving this industry also has to evolve going forward and i think in terms of the evolution we have not traveled even the 30 or 40% journey the kind of potential it has got in the evolution wow wow so that was very enlightening for uh, the industrial part of it uh but now i want to see a little bit of um how your journey as a ceo has transformed you or what kind of um mind frame and all that led you so the first question for that would be um what advice in general would you give to teenagers uh watching this from all over the world and uh, the reason i ask this is as a ceo uh you've grown tremendously in both your career and i'm sure as a person as well so in general what should fo- teens focus on which might help them uh, get to the position you are whether it be in this field or another so let me tell you one thing no i mean i am not a born ceo no one i mean i believe that no one is a born ceo everyone can become ceo okay this is the first time for most thing how do you become so let me tell you very frankly when i started my career i was not uh, dreaming that uh, uh, and uh, but in my 25th year i'll become ceo no you don't know i mean you don't have the crystal ball to gauge that mm-hmm. and the, again the mantra remains the same that do you give your best to what you have in the hand yes uh, i uh, i mean uh, maybe after about 18 years of the ground experience i came into the core management role of managing the enterprise the smaller or bigger enterprise and it is uh, a job where you have to be highly alert and your view must be 360 degree mm-hmm. right you can't be so running a uh, uh playing a role of a ceo is like uh your mind or you are always alert uh on a 360 degree view right from your customer to your employees to uh, your business your uh, cash flow your banking uh, and yourself right right uh, uh you have to assimilate everything and you have to uh, devote time to every piece of uh, brick which helps you to construct the organization right so just to give you a flavor i spend 15% of my time searching good people right typically in a month i will interview maybe 30 to 40 people uh, right this is uh, this is uh, this is by, because where do you get the good people mm-hmm okay um the another 15 to 20% time goes on coaching and mentoring the people or the team which you have yeah. because what you get from the market they may not be ready made uh, meeting your requirement so you have to work with them right another 15 to 20% time goes into your cultivating the relationship with the outside world meeting the customers understanding the business understanding the uh, the customer need uh, searching new businesses traveling to new geographies meeting new people so that is the investment you do uh, right so typically uh, this is what the so and the one very uh, crucial aspect is 
ultimately in the business you are judged by your performance of your numbers mm -hmm. so at every quarter the your investor the stakeholders they expect a certain level of performance irrespective of anything what you do so right. you have to keep the so basically at this level you have to understand the expectation and you have to do the expectation management properly whether it is a stakeholder or employee or a customer you have to also be watchful that what kind of expectation you should build so it mm -hmm. should not be a over expectation you build and uh, uh, people are uh, not happy with that uh, tomorrow we must build the right expectation and we must deliver it right because ultimately you are uh, your credibility or your performance is judged by your consistency what you uh, say and what you achieve i see i see right. and uh, apart from your mindset um how did you deal with the health health aspect in terms of uh, you know your physical health as being a ceo is a quite challenging task and the reason i ask this is that you must deal yourself with a lot of stress especially in uh, you know as a ceo so if people in the future were to achieve this position how would be a good way to decompress so to be very honest i i so since i enjoy the work i have no stress wow when i am in office uh, that is the time when i forget everything so even if i am uh, hungry i don't notice when i am in the office it is on, i notice i am hungry only when i come out of the office wow because i am so absorbed so firstly the work is not a work doesn't bring the stress to me mm -hmm. secondly for the on my physical side i uh, have cultivated hobbies where i can uh, uh, devote my energy and get refreshed myself so i do a lot of running right oh. so i i do i do say about 20 to 30 km a week run maybe in two spells or three spells i run half marathons Uh, at least five or six half marathons in a year so that keeps me fit apart from that i play golf uh when sober i get the time maybe uh, one or two games per month depending on the time but mm -hmm. the running is the one habit which i cultivated where so if i am any part of the globe any city uh shoes are in my bag and i am on the street if there is a even one night uh, stay in that city new place mm -hmm. so if i get and 10 km running doesn't require it requires only one hour time so just to sum it up i have always time for everything i am never short of time even in office or <laughs> at a personal level wow uh, apart from that i have reading habit so i read about one one and a half hour daily some diverse subjects right from the spirituality to the philosophy to the geopolitics to the history and psychology mm -hmm. psychology is something and history is something which is very close to my heart and that is the time when i am reading i unwind myself totally mm -hmm. or when i am running i unwind myself totally wow. right so just just to sum it up a bit uh, you'd say that time organization is a big uh, part of your life and an important part of your life um, along with that having consistency throughout uh, you know your life you know you keep running you know wherever you go so uh, you know obviously that would be a big thing as well right and uh, finally the the intake of knowledge is always there that's right i see i see yes i that must be very important and um apart from that um you know just in general will you be changing something post covid 19 and uh, the reason i'm asking this is that throughout covid 19 many people were able to reflect on many previously buried things whether it is for work or your personal life so would you be changing something so one thing i have realized that uh, uh, 
our offices. Uh, being a construction industry, we always believed that the home working or distant working is not for us. But one thing I have learned and realized that our offices, uh, not the projects, but offices can definitely run with the 50% strength uh, because of this. And we are going to promote now in the company to work from home, uh, at least with the 50% strength. Right. This is the new... Uh, uh, second uh, thing we have learned that the... So just to give you the idea, normally at this level you travel almost 10 days a month, right? So mm -hmm. almost your 30-40% time goes in traveling and doing some meeting, right? Now with the, uh, uh, this COVID, it has taught that you can very effectively work without even personal meetings. Why do you travel? You travel for personal meetings, right? Mm -hmm. And you will not believe that we have concluded our uh, last year's budget over the Zoom and the Microsoft team meeting, uh, where at one point of time, we have uh, on an average 20 to 25 participants effectively communicating and articulating what we need to do, whether it is a project review, whether it is a business review, whether it is a finance review. And we have gone as much as 100 people gathering, communicating, uh, if there is a larger issue to be conveyed within the organization. So according to this, COVID has been a big learning step as far as the organization and individually for me also, right? Mm -hmm. And one thing effectively we have learned that Distant, distance working is more effective than your personal meeting. Yes, uh, in certain cases you may still require, but most of the meetings you can finish off with this without wasting your time in traveling, without your uh, uh, spending time on waiting to meet somebody, right? So, and the communication is as effective as the personal meetings. So this has been a... Uh, a very good learning. This is what COVID has given. Wow. Yeah. So just to sum it up as a total, um, we're, we're going to be seeing some drastic changes in the industry, you know, and good changes too. Uh, so um, you're seeing, you know, changes that have never happened before. Right. And um, you, you'd value consistency. You'd value uh, quick thinking. You'd value, in uh, intake of knowledge, constant intake of knowledge, and uh, so this this would be a summary of of this interview. Yeah, would you say like that is an accurate summary? Yeah, I yeah I will say so. That's right. That's a uh, that way. That is a nice way to put it up. Yes. And uh, and somewhere you have to discover your passion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that that is a super important thing. And finally, just one last question. This is just uh, apart from uh, all other things, you know. Uh, do CEOs hold themselves in a serious demeanor, you know, all the time? And the reason I'm asking this is simply for fun. Us uh, as teenagers, we like to have fun, right? So I was wondering if CEOs do too. Everyone, everyone uh, uh, loves to have fun, right? So, so it's not that you get transformed to somebody else uh, uh, when you become a CEO. In fact, the higher you grow, higher the flexibility you need to have. Mm -hmm. so, so CEO does not mean something moron cast out of a stone, and he is no. Uh, uh, the, the higher position you reach, you have to be very, very flexible. So at one hand, when you are able to, you have to deal with your uh, uh, a very junior employee to the uh, some uh, uh, chairman or uh, board of directors some, uh, for some other company. And you have to do with the same ease. Okay, people should not be afraid to approach you on an environment like this, 
today with the social media, everything, you have to be uh, accessible to the people. And that can happen only when you are flexible. Right. So we have, uh, I mean, like any other human being, or even as a teenager, we have our, uh, you have a uh, share of fun, whether you love to eat or uh, gossip with the friends or, uh, so what is this when you go for the uh, 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 golfing or when you are uh, uh, socializing, everyone loves to have that. So nothing changes. I see. But after, awesome. you have to come back and uh, retain your focus. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, I thank you so much, Mr. Tripathi, for being available for this interview. Um, this has provided great insight, I'm sure, to teenagers all around the world. It has provided great insight for me as well, as I now have a deeper understanding of the construction field that I did not have going into this interview. So, um, again, I thank you a lot. I thank you for your time. And uh, thank you so much. Good. Thank you. Thank you. You articulated questions very well. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.